Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're gonna be delving into Ukraine. Now dipping into today's episode, I'm just gonna be highlighting a few things and you tell me what you think about them. Going to a war 6,000 miles from your country is okay. Going to a war just on your borders is not. Killing people 6,000 miles away is fine. Innocent people, it's okay to kill them, it's fine. They're terrorists. Killing people who are trying to attack your country just on your border is not, it's not okay. Stealing another country's resources out of pure greed 6,000 miles away is fine. Invading a country that 30 years ago was yours is not. Planting puppet regimes 6,000 miles away is fine. Having a puppet regime or just a neutral or non-aggressive regime in the country next to you is not. Having democracy and being really worried about democracy 6,000 miles away is, is fine. It's fine. It's okay to worry about democracy 6,000 miles away from your home. But you're not allowed to worry about a potential danger next to you that can have nuclear weapons and potentially attack you. You're not allowed to worry about that. It's, it's not justified. I gave these small comparisons because Iraq is 6,000 miles away from America. And Ukraine is just at the borders of Russia. Now, before anyone makes any assumption, I'm totally against the war in Ukraine. And I think it's unnecessary. What I'm trying to highlight here is the level, the pure level of hypocrisy that we're being constantly fed on a daily basis just because the rhetoric suits specific countries when it comes to Russia. So everything is okay when you commit crimes against humanity, when you use weapons of mass destruction, when you ruin countries, when you occupy lands that had nothing to do with you historically and that have never threatened you in current history. It's all fine. But when you're genuinely worried about a country just next to you that was traditionally part of you and under your influence, if you start worrying about that country potentially being hostile and having the ability to put strategic weapons in its borders that can potentially attack you and occupy you, no, don't worry about that. And that's what's happening. The NATO, against its previous agreements it had with Russia, and behind it obviously the US, moving everything as it wants, has been constantly expanding against Russia. And Russia is not in a very powerful position geographically. You're talking about a country with borders of all of Eastern Europe. Now, some countries already have threatening weapons in them that are directed against Russia. America, wh what does it have? It has nothing. It has oceans next to it. No one threatens it. But it feels like it's somehow entitled to bully and threaten everyone across the world and, do, and, and basically justify it by any means necessary. I mean, look at the media. You're constantly fed that what Russia is doing is a completely illegal aggression. Putin is constantly compared to Hitler. You have social media, giants like Facebook, temporarily removing restrictions on hate speech to allow people to call for the death of Russians. Imagine that. Imagine how worrying that is. So you basically go against all of your values just because the situation suits you. I mean, to what level are we going to reach? You're allowed to support Ukraine in its resistance, send them arms, weapons, everything you want. You're allowed to financially support them. You're allowed to send aid 
and you're able to volunteer directly. You can go to the Ukrainian embassy and go and support the fighting in Ukraine with weapons, okay, yeah, and be hailed in the Western media. How does that compare to conflicts in the Middle East? You don't really need to say a word. It's the absolute opposite, complete and utter hypocrisy. You're talking about a country in the form of the US wanting to have full homogeneous control in Europe and Russia. Russia is the only threat in Europe to the US. It has lots of natural resources. It's a very rich country and it has lots of potential. And they don't like that. And because they don't like that, they'll justify everything to do whatever they want with Russia. And if you talk about the last 20 years, only the last 20 years, the biggest aggressions, the biggest aggressive, unnecessary wars that happened in this world were led by the US and the Western countries. The U.S. on its own spent three trillion U.S. dollars out of its own citizens' pockets to go to unnecessary, unjustified criminal wars in the Middle East. And guess what they did eventually? They withdrew. It wasn't a worry about uh, Afghani women wearing whatever they like and democracy. No, it wasn't about that. Totally not. The Taliban took over the next day. Literally, America went, Taliban took over. That's it. So where's George Bush's promise that we're going to collapse the Taliban? You, you never collapsed them. They were always there, and they went back. They supposedly freed Iraq, a country that had free health care, free amazing education system, hardly any illiteracy, a functioning country, by all means, led by a dictator. Let, let us not be, uh, let us not sugarcoat anything here. Saddam Hussein was a dictator. There is no denying that. He did some atrocious things. No denying that. But now it's far worse than what it was before. And the people paid for those wars. We need to understand that. Secondly, if you were worried about that regime of Saddam in Iraq, why are you not worried about the rest of the dictators? Is it because they're your allies? Is it because you have deals with them? Is it because they fall under your influence? Is it because they obey? Maybe. And is it the same thing with Ukraine? Is it because you don't want a regime in Ukraine that will, God forbid, have a level of independence and somewhat see some sort of interest in keeping somewhat of a peaceful relationship with Russia and not go full throttle against Russia to stabilize the country and have a peaceful country. Is, is it that? Is it that that you're worried about? And no, they need to completely fall under your influence. Furthermore, people are paying the price. The people of Ukraine because of this unjust, aggressive war from Russia, and not just because of the aggression of Russia, because of the constant expansion of US and NATO towards Russia, and because of how they're dealing with the conflict in Ukraine, and what they're telling their allies in Ukraine to do, and not to do to receive their support. And it's not only the Ukrainians paying the price, all of the world is paying the price, and Europeans are paying the price because of their government's policies. That's why you have an increasing rejection of populations in Europe against their governments and their acts and hostility towards Russia, because they're paying the price. We're already paying more than double in terms of energy. You have uncertainty coming towards the winter, and economically, everyone's losing. So whose interest is it? Is it the people's interest or is it other people's interest, other very few people's interest? The only thing we need to do is have a set of values that we support on every side and not be hypocrites. 
Because if you're against war in a certain place, you need to be against it in another place. And if you support the resistance of people to get their rights, then you should support people's resistance all across the world, not just in Ukraine. If you take a specific stance for refugees from Ukraine, you should also take it for refugees in other countries and more deprived countries, way more deprived than Ukraine, by the way. And the war definitely must end. However, what the US and its allies are, are doing in Ukraine isn't contributing to reaching a solution and having finally some peace in Ukraine. Which leads us to the characters of both Biden and Putin and how good this side is and how bad that side is. And if you purely take it and base it on competence, I'm way more worried about Biden, to be honest with you. I mean, this guy, there was a video the other day of him calling a deceased person in the crowd that died 30 days ago. Jackie, where's Jackie? Clear signs of dementia. I mean, if it was both Putin and Biden responsible to click the nuclear button, we'd all be up there when he makes the statement of, oh, I pressed the button. <laughs> we'll all be with Jackie up there when he presses the button. So I'm, I'm way more worried about Biden than I am with Putin. And I do pray that we do not reach a stage where anyone has to use nuclear weapons. But for us not to reach that stage, we need to highlight the problems of the policies that are being taken and potentially be devastating for everyone. There needs to be a change of action plan and you need to have a different approach with Russia to end the conflict and finally bring some peace to that region.